Good evening. You're just in time for the story. Take a seat. Tonight's tale comes from my own personal memoirs, and therefore is non-fiction. I was in the United Kingdom in 2014. My wife and I had decided to pack our life's belongings into long-term storage and spend a year backpacking through Europe. We'd landed in Bristol for a time, where I had a job relief or supply teaching in schools in the area, so we rented a room in a house for a few months. We were both very interested in history and culture, and so when we discovered that the world's first domino set was nearby, we hopped in the car and drove the hour and a half to Stonehenge. We arrived at the place, and there was the obligatory English Heritage Museum and gift shop, where we wandered, waiting for our turn to walk the two kilometers up to the ancient antenna array. Around the museum were copies of artifacts and pieces of writing from historians and philosophers who all pondered at the reason our Neolithic ancestors thought that taking 25-ton stones and stacking them in a circle would make for a fun afternoon. It was in this museum I found myself looking at a skeleton behind glass and wondering what I might look to tourists in 5,000 years' time when a strange woman walked up next to me. I had noticed her before. She appeared like she had walked into a hedge dressed like an extra from Pride and Prejudice and had exited the hedge with half the bush still attached. She clasped at a staff that might have once belonged to Radagast the Brown, and her eyes certainly matched that mad gaze that Sylvester McCoy portrayed so well. She was, in short, a druid, one whose hairdresser had obviously been both a fan of troll dolls and wilderness gardening. However, unlike those who practice their art with full reverence to all creatures, this woman had been wandering the museum like she had some special connection to the place, and after inciting other patrons' thoughts towards homicide, she had now materialized at my side. She rattled her stick and hummed a tune. Ooh, she said, I feel great pain and sorrow here. I neglected to explain to her about self-fulfilling prophecies and nodded politely. I had wondered about whether she was part of the attraction, having seen Roman soldiers at Bath and barbarians at Hadrian's Wall. But the way the museum staff seemed to stiffen and avoid eye contact whenever she plagued their vicinity led me to believe that she was simply insane. I was going to permit her eccentricities to go unchallenged, however she persisted. Ooh, she said again, he died in great pain, great sorrow. Well, yes, I agreed. Both his femurs have been shattered and his skull looks like it's been trepanned by a tree. I'd say it's a safe guess. She cooed. Obviously, I'd encouraged her by acknowledging her presence with my sarcasm. She continued, speaking to the case, as if ignoring me completely. He was in love, unrequited love. It was not the pain of physical harm, but the pain of a broken heart. I stared at the woman in disbelief, lost in the tragedy that was her vacuous soliloquy. You can tell all of that just from here, I asked, baiting the trap. She leapt at it. Yes, she cried. I can. The spirits speak to me and me alone. I can tell you much. His spirit is here tied to his body. It was almost too easy. It says here that he was found in a dig about four miles south of here. Yes, she expounded. He hates being here in this museum. He hates the people staring at his bones all day long. Amazing, I said. It also says that this Fiberglass reconstruction is here on loan from the Natural History Museum in London, and that the original skeleton has been interred in their vault in London since 1934.
I looked at her. She looked at me. I looked at my watch. It's time for my tour, I smirked. It's, uh, it's time I left, she said hurriedly. And with that, she did, vanished in a puff of embarrassment. I walked towards the exit with my wife. The employee on the door looked at me with a beaming smile and shook my hand eagerly. Thank you, sir. <laughs> We've been wanting to do that for days. And that's the end of the story. Good night.